this feel like old home week being in here? It's pretty neat. Well, we just got, uh, Herm just said it, you know, there's uh, really cool things that go along with winning championships and there's a piece of us that's in here someplace, you know, but, you know, it's, uh, but it was a necessity too. I mean, you get into weather down here and obviously with the rain that we found ourselves a little bit out when I was at Houston and we'd have to go over to, you know, certain places over Texans and it just wasn't real good. So they did it right. I tell you that it's awesome looking facility. Mm -hmm. Um, we haven't really got a chance to talk to you in depth, you know, since all the players leaving and yeah. you know everything else. How are you? How are you fielding a defense? Well, I mean, it's uh, there's some guys that I'm actually excited for, and then obviously this, these things are going to happen. Uh, you just deal with them. I mean, uh, there's been some adverse things that that I've gone through that are way worse than this, so yeah. I can tell you that. And next guy up, and I'm excited to watch some of these guys play. Do you expect Malik to play? Uh, I don't know. I, it, to me, you got to practice. You know what I mean. So it's, uh, you know, doubtful. Yeah, but to me, it's like how, how well you're going to play if you don't practice. So that's that's how I feel. Todd, I guess maybe kind of strange that you're you're back here and ending your first season in Texas. But just now that you, I guess maybe you've had at least a little bit of time to look back on it. I mean, what are your thoughts just on you know the first year that you've been in Texas? Uh, you know. There's still a lot of work to do. Uh, I like our, our kids work their tails off, you know, and that's uh, there's some things that obviously I, I wish that, that I would have probably done a better job of in terms of some calls down some of the stretches of the games that I, I believe that I could have helped out a little bit more in, in finishing those ball games. But I think we've made some strides and I think we're, we're trying to set a culture and try to set a system in that I believe that the kids feel uh, comfortable with. and. I think it will get better, to be honest with you. So I am excited about the future. And just kind of from a, from a personal standpoint, I mean, it seems like Texas fans are kind of terrified of losing you at some point. But, I mean, does that, I guess, mean anything to you, just knowing that they they care so much about the job that you've done this season? Um, in this profession, it's it's tough because after every season, it's either they're running out of town or they're, they're, they're saying good things about you. So I, I, I don't... All I care about is these kids. I really do. And I don't think people understand that, like, when you do this for a living and you get a little bit older. Maybe when I was a younger guy, it was like, think about this. But I, I really believe that we can get this thing uh, going like it's been in the past. And there's a part of me that uh, there is a part of, of loyalty in this. And, and like I said, it, whether this shakes out, and I don't know how this is going to play out, but I know this. I look at those kids every day and I, and I ask them to do things that sometimes are above and beyond the, the call of, of duty. And I think they look at me and say the same thing. Like, and I've been really, really honest with everybody and everybody knows how I feel about this place. And this is, it, to me, this is the best job in the country. It really is. I mean, you look at the facilities and the educational value that we have and the way that we can go out there and, and look what we did recruiting wise in terms of the things that we can sell. I, I love this place. When you, when you start looking at Missouri, do they remind you of like Oklahoma State? Yeah, they do. They yeah, they do. I mean, that's probably the, I mean, we've already talked about that part of it, but I think they might be faster, really? honestly. I mean, their receivers can absolutely go. You know, Hall is like, man, those guys are fast. Uh, and, and they're running by Georgia's guys and Auburn's guys, and, and you know what they have on talent-wise. So it's probably going to be the fastest skill guys that we've seen uh, you know, with the exception of maybe a handful of guys, but I'm just saying, like, if, in terms of just right, like straight takeoff, run down the sidelines, it's it's really impressive. How has the transition been? It's not much of a transition, but PJ sliding into safety is the least you got a guy. It's not place. because we've we've kind of uh, you know we trade those guys in and out. Craig does that, and we we mix and match every day in practice, so they they understand it. They're in the same room, hearing the same thing. So whether we move a a middle linebacker to a rover or an outside guy. We're all in the same rooms together so they can learn that way. So I don't think it's going to be a major deal with PJ. Coach, I, I know um, I got two questions for you. Yeah. I, since you love the program so much, did you interview with anybody else? Did you talk to anyone else I in the offseason? I did. Okay. So, I mean, just – and I don't want to get into that because it's uh, it's unfortunate the timing that wouldn't happen. But – and I don't want to go on a rant. I don't. I don't want to do it. It's just, you know, when we're – in an early signing date and you got some information that comes out, that sure as heck don't help. Okay, so, but uh, I'll set the, uh, the record straight on that thing. There was no interview. Okay. Second is, uh, you got the extra practices. Who are the young guys that maybe had a chance to stand out for you or any young guys that stood out for you? Uh, I think, uh, 
uh, TQ has done a really good job. DeMarco Boyd's out here, you know, who normally doesn't get a lot of reps. Uh, uh, Kez Bimage is another guy that comes out. You know, Josh Josh needs all the reps that he can too. So there's some guys that are out here that normally, you know, we'll probably put down at look team of that are up here with us and I think are doing a really good job. Remember, we went through and I told the guys when we first started this off, let's go through day one install, day two install, get these guys hearing the verbiage again, get them out there with our players. Like guys, the, the veteran guys can help coach them up. So it's been good. So when we get into March of next year, or whenever we start up spring football, it's not going to be foreign to those guys. So, I mean, it's this is the stuff that every elite program gets. They get these extra whatever we took, 12 days of practice, and we use the first six of them just simply for the guys so they can get reps because we kind of lose them. They kind of go over and give looks for, you know, scout team and those things. So you really don't know. You watch a little bit of film here and there, but – Having DeMarco Boyd and having those guys down here where we can actually coach them up is such a help. Yeah. Yeah. Let's got time for a couple last ones. Uh, okay. when, uh, with, your, with your dime personnel, yeah. I, I think Oklahoma State was the first game you really used that. Did yeah. you just like that package? Is that where you wanted to evolve, or did you just do it? No, it was in our package. We just never pulled it out, out on early downs. It was more or less a third down uh, defense. So we decided going into it, it's very multiple, and. Um, we decided to give it a shot, and that's all that was because we knew that it was going to be difficult. And uh, because put more DBs on the game, you can run more coverages, and that's what it came down to. But it's always been a part of us, and just mainly did it on third down. What do you like about what the personnel you've got with that package? Because we got some hybrids, guys like Jason, and uh, you know, there's a couple other guys like uh, Hager's another guy that we can move them around and play them in different spots. I got you, brother. Oh, oh, hey, Coach, uh, we heard Coach Herman say, uh, nobody believes you guys can win. What do you tell your side, the, the ball coach, to, to get them fired up, or do you believe your bunch believes they can do this? No, I don't think it's nobody believes. We, 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 I think Herm says that as, as a matter we're in our place and, we, and we're perceived as the underdog. But, uh, uh, to me, it's about getting better and going out there and being, being ready. I think there's always, uh, when you get into bowl games, especially from doing this for a long time, it's, you have to make a decision as a ball club of how much you're going to put into this and how much you're going to prepare. And that's a, especially when you get into game week because there's a lot of things. Uh, there's some really cool things that they do in the bowl site. You have an opportunity to be in a, a big city here, and there's a lot of distractions that go into it. So uh, whoever prepares the most, in, a, in my opinion, in the next three days will probably be the team that will start out fast. And I think if you start out fast in this game, you have a chance of winning it. Brian and that. Along, along those lines, do you guys kind of play on their pride a little bit? You know, like, like, hey, you know, it's really, be real easy for Texas to say, well, we lost all these guys to the draft and guys suspended. Yeah, but do I, do but I think we're kind of past that part of okay. it. I think individually, these kids care, and I think there's, you know, uh, you know, you brought up uh, like Anthony Wheeler. I think there is a sense of like, like I, I got to hold my own. But remember, Wheels was a starter now. You know, he was a guy that played early in the season, so. I think there is stuff. I think, you know, a guy like PJ going back there instead of, uh, you know, Deshaun. I mean, right. we've got some guys that played now. We're not throwing in a, you know, uh, somebody that hasn't played ball there. So, right. but there is an obligation to each other. When you get to be really tight, there is always you look around and say, I don't want to let my teammates down. And I, and I get a sense of that going into this week. When you got guys missing, you know, like they do, does it, is the positive that it almost gives you a head start and a jump on next season? No, we're not thinking that. We're okay. thinking about winning a ball game. That's it. I mean, that's that part of it. Now, we have to shuffle around the deck because when you lose guys, if somebody gets hurt, you got to go to the next guy, and then this guy's probably got to move over to a different position. So to, to take a look at guys in different spots, absolutely have to do that just from making sure that you got the next best guy, athlete, not – not actually I'm the backup safety or I'm the backup linebacker. Who's the next best linebacker? And if he has to play a different position, he has to play a different position. So we can cross train during this time to make sure that we got the best athletes on the field and not just the next best at that position. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, you know, just probably going through the deal, um, we feel like both those guys have had up and down, uh, had some really good parts of the season and have, have made some mistakes through the course of the season. Um, we got two competitive guys, two talented guys. Sometimes you think you could change change them, you know, as that goes on. I think nine of the 12 games, maybe it was one of the two was injured, 
So, we, you know, the other guy had to, had to be in there the whole time. So I don't know that it was ever a true competition, per se. Once the season got going, yeah. you got to play the guy who was healthy. When the season ended, we gave those guys opportunities to go out there and perform. Obviously, the, the one factor, and I've talked with Sam quite, about, quite a bit about, is, you know, protecting a football. And we got a really good defense. And making that team have a, a, an, another team have to go the length of the field, um, that's okay. That's okay to do that. It's okay to punt and let our guys go play defense. And uh, sometimes as a young player, a guy that, you know, he's making that play at Westlake mm -hmm. probably nine out of ten times and they score and people are raising his hand and everything's, everything's going good. It's different in college football. Right. And he still tries to make those plays and doesn't have to. Right. Doesn't have to force those things. And, and, and we'll talk about Missouri in a second, but I got to ask you about these two guys y'all just signed. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it feels like when spring ball hits, this thing's going to be totally reset. Totally what? The position to be reset. You know, you have well, four cer guys competing. Certainly, we're we're gonna we need to to challenge the guys in the, in the room currently, because mm -hmm. right now, what is it? They're just against each other. Right. Right. So. If, if one guy's not having a good day, then that means the other guy automatically is better than him. Now, did he earn that spot? Yes or no? I don't know. You know what I mean? So now there's going to be more. The, the best player has to be consistent. That's the problem, again, with young players and constantly changing defenses is just having a guy consistent enough to do what we need him to do all the time. Yeah, Coach, we've talked a lot about what Sam needs to do, but what, what do you need to see out of Shane in this bowl game? Um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing with him um, – He's got to be a little better in the pocket, in the pocket presence with him. Um, that, that's one of the issues right now, keeping us out of bad plays, negative plays. Um, it's tough for us behind the chains. If we're second and long, that's, that's not a good thing. I think that's one of the biggest things with him. Just like I would say that's his biggest uh, area that he needs to continue to work on as Sam's area is turnovers. And, and I guess kind of a difficulty that maybe didn't pan out with everybody thought, but just wondering from a, I guess a personal standpoint, you know, has the season lived up to your expectations or just, you know, what has it been like being here for the first year? Um, yeah, certainly we underperformed. I mean, we have high expectations here. I know Coach Herm does, but I do too, and our staff does. And I, I appreciate the staff. It has been a trying season, certainly with constant change and constant uh, injury. But the future is bright. We're excited about the guys we have, and we're going to go to war with the guys we have. They work really hard. Obviously, we got some setbacks heading in this game. It's next man up. You know, we just got to go do what we can do and get our guys out there. We're laying that foundation. You know, putting that brick down that says we're going to play as hard as we can, and we have to be better protecting a football. That's one of the foundations of our program that we're not doing right now, and we have to fix that. And so that's part of our goal uh, heading into this game. But doing those types of things, but certainly uh, the things that we expected out of ourselves, out of our program, maybe heading into the season. But it is a learning experience for all of us. I know me personally, like I haven't played any of these teams in the last, I don't know, seven, six years, whatever it's been, probably longer than that. So it's also learning them. What do they do when it's third and one? And how do they go? And Because everybody has a different philosophy against what you do. You scout a team and you watch a team but they are also scouting and watching you. So their game plan is different what their game plan was against Texas Tech, say. Okay, so you watch Texas Tech and go, yeah, oh, wow, they're playing cover two. Well, they don't do that against you. Why? Well, because we're not Texas Tech. So they have a different plan. So it's been a, a constant adjustment. And when you have younger players, sometimes that's harder to adjust on the fly and teach those guys some of that stuff. But they're getting better. I mean, this I know it doesn't always equate to wins and losses, and that's, that's a tough thing because you want it to be – equated in wins and losses but sometimes it doesn't sometimes it's individual personal performance you see guys doing some things they haven't done and you're like man that's really good he did that he made the it's a great route or a great block or a, man he made that catch and it could be one play two plays and you say wow the future is really going to be bright we get this guy for a whole nother year to coach him up and and get them to, to really understand all the things, it's going to be really good. So as coaches, we're, we're still upbeat. We're still coaching hard, and we're coaching the guys we got. And uh, I love our our energy and our um, enthusiasm and our and our mentality right now heading into the game. How's uh, Elijah Rodriguez look? <coughs> he looks good. You know, he, you know, he, 
you know, he's missed the, the entire year, so figure out how he'd probably, you know, a little rusty, but he's working through it. And, uh, you know, he, he just brings some depth and some leadership a little bit. You know, just an older guy. It's, it's good to have, have some of those guys in there. Tim, I know How, because of injuries, you guys played a lot of your young guys this year, but who yeah. in these bowl practices has really stood out to you as somebody you're looking forward to, what they can do with the spring? And the yeah, yeah, I thought Reese Leto had a good little deal for us playing tight end. I did. I, he kind of been – he was a guy that showed out a little bit, you know. And obviously we're excited about Jordan Pouncey. You know, I think Jordan's – I think those are the only two guys on offense we didn't play that are freshmen. All the rest of them played, so. Well, what specifically about Reese? The physicality of him, but but you know it's surprising. He he runs well and really could, he catches the ball well. I I was surprised. I thought he was more of a guy that would just slobber knock you down inside there, but he he can move pretty good. And you see penalty as slot. Your you know I think right now he's one of those guys that could probably put anywhere. He's got good enough length to be an outside guy. He's got good shifting. He's he's uh, very natural at breaking, getting out of his breaks. He doesn't have to slow down to do that or chop his feet. He's very fluid, great change of direction, and he's got really good uh, ball tracking skills. So on the deep ball and things like that, he tracks the ball well. How good is this uh, Tigers defense coach? You know, they're, they're good up front. I mean, they got a really good uh, front, front uh, four group, very active. Um, you know, I, I think they're a real sound group. Obviously, they've um, done some things to get themselves on a hot streak, and they've played really well. A lot more confidence with them. The middle linebacker does a great job, 47, directing that whole unit over there. So uh, it's going to be a challenge. I mean, we're going to we got to come to play now. How, uh, how big of a game is this for uh, Daniel and uh, Kyle to show them what, you, what they can do and uh, heading into next season as well? Yeah, certainly. I mean, they're they're getting they're the next guys up, and they're going to get an opportunity to carry the rock quite a bit. And, uh, you know, really our whole team, we got to be, you know, we got one tight end, we got two running backs, and they got to be ready to go, you know. We got to be ready. Everybody's got to be ready and on call and be waiting for that, that message to go out there. So we're repping all that. We're getting a lot of, a lot of that, uh, that stuff ready and making sure those guys are ready to go. That's, that's kind of what I was going to ask you. You're losing you're down to two running backs, and you're also the, you know, little Jordan who is kind of coming along in short yardage mm -hmm. is now out. Mm -hmm. How much is all of this? limiting what you can or can't do um you know we, we just we're, I can't I can't answer too much to give it all away but right. we're doing uh we're doing what we have to do um as far as the game plan yeah. putting together a game plan that we feel like hey this is we we got to have these things to win the game and, and I asked Tio this but I wanted to ask you too is at some point, do y'all sort of appeal to their personal pride a little bit? It's like it'd be real easy for Texas to say, "Hey, we got all these players out. We can go out here and just stumble around." But you know, the players who are out there need to turn it up. Yeah, they they do. But I mean, I don't know that uh, they don't. Like I I don't ever feel like this year, our players at one time felt like they cashed it in ever, mm -hmm. ever. I felt like they played really hard. I felt like we we could play smarter at times offensively for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but as far as their effort and their energy and and playing hard to win the games, mm -hmm. I never felt one time our guys didn't do that. And I, I, sh I certainly don't expect that now. And I loved our energy today. I really thought it was at a high level. Uh, again, was execution at 100%? No, I mean, it's part of why we're practicing, but, and we need to continue to get better at those things. But I love, I love the mentality where our guys are at. Thanks, Coach. Thank you guys good? Thanks, Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. You too, Merry Christmas.